It's Ask Some Engineers. Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Engineers. We just got off a jam-packed show and tell 2.0, but now mm -hmm. it's time for Ask Engineers. It's me, Lady Ada, broadcasting live from the Adafruit factory, which is right behind us. We do all our testing, manufacturing, coding, and shipping of the electronic goodies that you know and love. With me is a special guest, Scott S., who is a developer lead for Circuit Because by Python. Tanu, we'll be talking Tanu. to Scott. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on, and you're here for a special celebration, too. Heck yes. Yeah. Woo. And we'll talk about it in a moment with me. Also, it is Lady Ada, who is also an engineer of sorts, <laughs> but uh, is on camera control tonight. Yeah. And uh, we'll go through all the news and uh, stuff that's lot. fit to print. Yeah, this is a jam-packed show. We got show. a lot going on. That's scary. Yeah. We'll get right we into it. We had some it. epic shows recently, too. Yeah, we had We've a lot had of guests. guests. We had that two-hour machine learning show. Yeah. I hope we, we're, train, we're going to train the AI using yeah. that show. It mm -hmm. is such a good time to do electronics and share code and build communities together. And um, I'm really happy that Scott's here and our entire community is here because mm -hmm. we've got so much going on. It's going to be a little bit longer than an hour tonight. Yes. But that's okay. Because we've got a lot to celebrate. Yeah. Why don't we start that off? What are we celebrating okay. today? The code is CircuitPython Day. Yay! 8-8 eight, yeah. eight is CircuitPython Day because those um, numbers kind of look like snakes. Yes. And it's CircuitPython Day, but this means that you also get a great discount. 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. It'll probably go longer because CircuitPython Day is tomorrow. Wink, so wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about a special surprise that's now in the store as well. When you use the code CircuitPython Day, you support us. Adafruit Industries, we are a USA company, no loans, no venture capital. It also supports the CircuitPython team, which is partly here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So make sure you do something. You like these people? You like the code they write? Yeah. That's right. Help pay the bills. Okay. Help them. Help us help them. We tried out a new service with Show & Tell because Hangouts Live has been sunsetted, but it worked out really well. Lady Ada will mm -hmm. talk about who is on the Show & Tell and what they shared and more. Have some make code. JP show previews that we're going to do. We have some Python on hardware news. Pack of the mailbag is going to stop by and read either a friendly email or a letter or a tweet. Mm -hmm. Time travel, a look around from makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, things that are going on in the industry and more. Help wanted, some jobs from the job board. Also, people who have skills, they post their skills up and cool companies find them and hire them. 3D printing, stuff from Noah and Pedro. We got some factory footage. Get some new products. We're going to answer your questions. We do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord, where you can join over 13,000 of us. Mm -hmm. Woo! Whoa. We have some top secret. We're going to give away something. All that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Yay! <laughs> okay. All right. So starting off, it's, it's purple time. Yeah. I got my circuit. I got my cool circuit. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I was my totally jealous. It's yeah, all shiny. Yeah, it's got blinking on them. Maybe I'll, I'll hold all right. it up. It's hard so, to see. But um, yeah, in celebration of yeah, Circuit Python, Circuit Day. Python Day. So let's uh, let's do this announcement thing. Yes. Guess what, everybody? If you order anything in the Adafruit store, except for gift certificates gift and certificates software, and it's and over forty nine dollars. You get a ruler, and we have a limited number of these. It's a Circuit Python ruler. Blinka, it's purple. It's kind of dark it's like, purple. Yeah. Look at Blinka. She loves rulers. <laughs> and we'll Cause talk, she's very curvy, and rulers are good for straight lines. We'll, well. we'll talk about uh, this. So it's a real device that you plug in. It's a Circuit Python board, and uh, it's part of our free deals. Do you yes. Want to talk about all the different free. I things? will talk about the free deals. So special for this month and this month only, uh, four nine dollars or more, you'll get a free Circuit Python ruler uh, sponsored by DigiKey as well. We designed. Uh, we took our six inch ruler. And we put some nice big capacitive touch pads on it and some LEDs, and it has a Trinket M0. So it's it's a very small but effective CircuitPython board. 
And of course, if you really want, you can also run Arduino on it, or you can run make code if you really like. But it comes with CircuitPython, and uh, it acts like a keyboard. So um, we'll talk about that more. But uh, free when you order more than forty-nine dollars for the stuff. It's a really good deal because the ruler itself is like twelve dollars. Uh, one nine nine, sorry, ninety-nine dollars or more, you'll get a free Perm Proto half-size breadboard. So you can take your solderless breadboard designs and solder them onto this Perm Proto to make them permanent. We have also at one. Uh, nothing for 149 right now. We ran out of all those badges. Perfect timing because now we're giving away the ruler. 199, sorry, 199 or more. You'll get a free UPS ground shipment in the continental United States. That's trackable and short shipping. That will get you on time. Uh, so we really like UPS ground for continental shipping, and you'll get that free when your order is $200 or more. And 299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, which not coincidentally also runs circuit python so we got a theme going on here <laughs> but it's got even more than the ruler it's got tons more capacitive touch pads neopixels buttons sensors um leds buzzers microphones and more uh so check that out uh now you have many circuit python boards you can get for free when you order and support adafruit okay for shipping ups grounds best way to go postal if you're willing to wait a little bit longer you might save a couple bucks but it might take a little bit longer to get to you and then dhl international sales through customs and more if you're in new york city check out before 11 a.m if it's a zip code that's in manhattan guess what you can get it same day here yeah all right and if you order enough you'll also get that free so show and tell i'll zip through these we had a lot of people thanks yeah. everybody we're, we are now moved over to Streamyard because uh google hangouts has been deprecated it's no longer available so we're not using Streamyard, which has some benefits which is you can there's, now there's lots watch of, it on twitch and facebook yeah we're mm -hmm. able to broadcast to all the places we broadcast, which is Mixer, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitch. I just want to say we were doing YouTube. Mixer before Ninja. <laughs> like we're, right. we're very cool. We have the pink hair too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit different though, so are you people getting getting the hang of it. Yeah, we there's a backstage, in, area, there's a backstage area, and then we can add people. But so far, so good. So far, working um, out. And it, they're you know they're a new startup, and this is really neat. It just means like when mm -hmm. one thing ends, there's another opportunity, and there really yeah. wasn't anything that was geared towards the way we use. Hangouts, anyways. Like we right. really, we use, we were abusing the. We hangouts. really, we really tweaked it to, to become a community platform, and we actually found a lot of people. Um, part of the Scott origin story, um, besides the crypt, the kryptonite and you know the planet going. Yes, and, yeah. And you know besides that origin story. It's really sad what happened to your parents. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but but you could save Earth now. Yes. Um, but you met us on show and tell, yeah. and so yeah. I, so we wanted to make sure we did something. We were going to figure something out. But this yeah. is kind of always neat. something. There's always a way to broadcast. Um, well, the thing I pointed out about the new service is that one issue people have in Hangouts is they don't always hold their projects high enough to yeah. get over the little the, like the bubbles bar. of everybody at the bottom. Yeah. And this doesn't have that problem, so I'm yeah. very excited. You that could, you we're going to be able to see everything. That Hangouts wasn't built for people showing their projects, and we yeah. we, we kind of really twisted it. Into this is that. actually a little bit better. Into like you can select when they want to show their screen. Yeah. It's a separate item. So you have their face and the screen, yeah. which is kind of cool. So there's some pros, but it's it's a little rough around the edges. So we're getting used to it. I'm yep. fine with it. Um, People are here because of cutting edge stuff. No, we're, we're if cutting edge. If you want to use WebEx, go to another chat. Go. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or Zoom. I think yeah. my favorite thing about WebEx is people call on the phone. I'm yeah. just like, damn. Yeah, but I guess that's All how right. they do it. Anyway. show and tell what they share? <laughs> we had so many people on the show. We had like 15 people on the show and tell. Phil B showed off his eight eyes. So what has more eyes than existing eye code, like the Halloween? Well, Halloween and Force coming out soon. And also we have a double eye project with eight times as many pixels. And he's got this beautiful eyeball code working on it. Uh, he deserves a round of applause if you see Phil B. I don't know, give him a dragon or <laughs> pizza or cupcakes or something because he, uh, he really rocked out that code and did an amazing job. And uh, we'll have a board that uses this code soon and it's going to be fully configurable on the fly, which is neat. Erin uh, previewed a project for, um, that she's doing, which is a crystal staff um, that's like six feet tall and has animations thanks to the accelerometer in it. So when she shakes it or like taps it or tilts it, it does different effects animations, which look really cool. She's really getting the hang of like making props with LEDs and accelerometer sensors. So uh, that was a preview, but check out the guide will come soon. So stay tuned. JP showed off this week's project he's working on, which will also be on JP's workshop. So uh, you can tune in live tomorrow to see him working on it, which is a fishing game. Um, we did uh, a few weeks, months ago, a mock-up of connecting up a rotary encoder to the hardware on the Pi Gamer 
and then you can make like a little uh, rotating um, crank. And so we're like, what would this be good for? And we're like, well, let's start with a fishing game. So using the hardware extensions from MakeCode, uh, you can add a additional hardware like we did uh, this week, um, a temperature, sorry, a uh, soil moisture sensor. And that's gonna be a rotary encoder. Um, so check out the game. Uh, he also did a really nifty uh, dithering alpha effect that was faked, which is cool. Mm. Uh, he's, he always pulls out the cool tricks. Um, Melissa uh, built a project for her personal use. It's a Stream Deck LED sign. So when she pushes a button on Stream Deck, it changes the LED sign that she can hang outside of her door that says on air or in a meeting so that people don't accidentally uh, walk in on her while she's having a video meeting, like on mm -hmm. Show and Tile, for example. Um, Brian came by and did a screen share, so it was great to test that out. He designed an itsy bitsy uh, wing, so it's a little add-on for the itsy bitsy that adds airlift, it's Wi-Fi support. And uh, he did a color picker demo, thanks to Matt Costi for writing the color picker example. Color picker example. Mm -hmm. um, so this airlift, I think it was in CircuitPython, it was a Metro M4, yes, yeah, so it's the smallest CircuitPython web server. Mm -hmm. um, and he's testing, using that to test it out, which is how we test hardware. We actually build stuff with it, so we know it works. <laughs> now Pedro uh, showed off this week's 3D Hangouts project, Braille Buttons. Um, the Pi Gamer has removable caps that you can change out. We give you, in the Adabox, we give a bunch of color caps. But he's like, I know Pedro, like, hey, let's instead um, have 3D printed buttons with Braille symbols on them so you can have video games that, uh, when you say press the button, um, you can yeah. actually feel the button press. It's um, kind of a neat idea. We'll play the video, but I guess I should also mention this now so I can send a link time-coded to okay. folks. Mm -hmm. So I think some people miss the point of accessibility sometimes because I just deleted their comments on YouTube. So the reason you would put bu Braille buttons on a device is because not everyone could see. Right. And just because the device has a screen on it doesn't mean we're making things that work on the screen. Our devices have audio. No, yeah, it's right. There's, <laughs> so, there's games that have like yeah. audio feedback or you can have buzzing feedback. Yeah, so, so there's a lot, and there are people writing video games that are completely, yeah. you know, there's no screen. So for the folks that can see, this is a great device. For the folks who can't see, we wanted to have something for them and we have a full um, bit of audio that we can always include. Yeah. Like you just press the A button. Well, we did yeah. the machine learning project, which is full audio feedback. Yeah, that's right. So, so this that's is what, what I was about to say. This would be for that. So we <laughs> have some voice recognition that we do with machine learning. And one of the cool things we did is have information on the screen that says, oh, you just said the word yes. But if you can't see that on the screen, we wanted to have that as something that people could hear. But then we thought, well, there's multiple buttons. So why don't we make sure that machine learning isn't going to leave anyone behind and we're not forgetting about anyone. You could make user interfaces that work with Braille and have something to do with machine learning and have audio feedback. Yeah. So anyways, so now I can put this time. Yes. Link and and the other thing I like to point out about accessibility is that doing that work always makes the experience better for everyone. Yeah. Right. Like what if you're playing a Pi gamer in the dark and you don't know which one A or B is exactly. or you're driving and you can't look at the screen, you need the audio feedback. Like, yeah. Pushing those boundaries is better for everyone. Yeah, I mean, I have. I think it's an Apple remote. I can't tell what button it is when it's dark. I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I just and I just like, well, whatever. And yeah. I eventually will press the right thing. Yeah. Yep. So it's learning yeah. how. Same as learning how to touch type. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh, that's the wrong key. We also had a bunch of visitors. Amelia, um, who actually just uh, published her guide on a band ca camp NeoPixel jacket, it has a really cool LED mapping technique where like there's like 20 LED strips and they the animations run through all of them so it looks really cool because it looks like it's um, a window into like an animated display um, the guide is live she also showed off a little necklace that she made with a single LED um, that maybe she'll write a guide for or maybe she'll just show off to people uh, we'll show off the, we'll talk about the guide and show it off soon but she demoed it live which was neat um, Lucien and Don uh, came by from uh, their local hacker space and they're working on a soil sensor for a Nebraska farmer who wants to measure uh, soil moisture and temperature um, in a rural area that doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi. So they're using LoRa Feather and Zeros, solar chargers and uh, phono modules to collect data over LoRa and then transmit it um, via cellular up to, um, you know, Adafruit.io or some other service. And they're doing it all in CircuitPython, which is really neat. Yeah. Uh, Lucian's also doing cool stuff with STM32 and CircuitPython, which we'll show off soon. That's in progress. Um, so good stuff happening, coming from those two. John G uh, is a, a teacher who is not an engineer, but is basically an engineer, 
who uh, teaches a class in iOS development and showed off an app that he wrote that would let you send images. I happen to have this because we're going to talk about it during our uh, Python on hardware section. Yeah. But it's a cool kiosk using the Pi Portal and then also an iOS device that allows you to send images and more to it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so he showed that off yeah. live, which is neat. And it's, uh, he got this Pi Portal in Adabox, put it outside um, his door, and students can see what he's up to and maybe get some inspirational memes as well. And then JMK built a Raspberry Pi 4 desktop computer with Circuit Playground uh, for a backlight, which is cool effects and, and, and make code, and dual display outputs. So this is a really nice computer. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful large displays running off of a Pi 4. Okay. What a time to be alive. Mm -hmm. All right, this is part of our Adafruit Live series of shows. JP's show is coming up tomorrow. 4 p.m. Um, here's some previews from last week. Um, yeah, there's and next week a recap this of last week, week and yeah. then some previews of what's coming up. We do a make good minute. Tomorrow's a new one. Yes. And then this was last week's. Okay, make take, code it away. Take it away, JP. So for today's make code minute, I want to talk about using the Gemma M0 with maker.makecode.com. So normally we use makecode.com or arcade.makecode, but maker.makecode.com allows you to use a whole bunch of different boards. So in this case, I've picked the Gemma M0. And uh, what you'll see here is that I'm using this input block section to pick the on touch, and then I'm picking the D0 pad as well as the D1 pad, and you can see them labeled over here in the simulator. And when I press the D0, we'll get the NeoPixel here turning blue. And when I press the D1 pad, you'll see I run through a little color sweep of the hue value using this index 0 to 255 block. And then when it's done setting those uh, colors, it lands on this sort of pink color. And when I press the D0, it's going to run through the color cycle. And when I press the D1, it'll go blue. Or I think I have those backwards. Yeah, D1 is going to the color cycle and D0 is going blue. Uh, and so that is one way that you can use the Gemma M0 with maker.makecode.com. Okay, okay. so did tomorrow, you know you could use Maker with the Gemma M0? It's true. Well, I did. Now you do. But I need reminders. Okay, well, mm -hmm. we've been reminded. Because there's a lot of things. It's very really powerful about. because it's like a little processor and then you have three ways of programming it. Yeah. Okay, it is now time. Blinka, 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 blinka. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on. Okay. First up, First up. Let's, uh, let's welcome Scott here. Welcome Scott Hello. here. Yay. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's patiently waiting. All Thank right. you. I'm so sure you're the, running through code in your for head. For the folks who don't know you, Scott, maybe you could tell us <laughs> a, little bit, more credit. a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Because you're, you're normally not here in New York, but you're, no. you're normally on the, the Hangouts. You're on I think show this is time. my third time. In yeah. person, ask an engineer, something okay. like that. Yes. Right. I'm nor I live in Seattle, which is on the other coast. Um, I've worked, for, it's been almost three years exactly that I've worked for you. Oh my goodness. Which is awesome. From the day that I got the email saying, hey, do you want to work with us? That was the 18th of August, That's three right. years ago. So. Oh, wow. Um, very well, that's why it's happy kind of and excited about those three years. Circuit Python day is kind of close. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I, they hired me to work on MicroPython, and we Circuit Python grew out of that work. Um, yeah, and we've never looked back. We I was just, like, hey, we're always looking forwards. I saw like I was like, oh, you're doing CFD stuff. Well, I have this this project, which might be possible, 
And it turns out it was possible yeah. and extremely successful. Yeah, and for the folks out there that um, want to build something like Circuit Python, I think one of the important <laughs> things is there's a community yeah. that comes along with it. At least that's the way we did it. And there's I, I there's a lot of work outside of coding. Yeah, that's just one part of it. Yeah. And um, Katni joined Adafruit, and she came up with the Code Plus community mm -hmm. little Circuit before Python. she joined us. Officially. Yeah. And I think one of the neat stories is um, we were asked a while ago, like, oh, why do you do a show and tell? And <laughs> because it, it's such a waste of time. Well, we were, asked, <laughs> we were asked by, you know, friends of the company. They're like, oh, why do you do it? Because they run a company, too. And they're like, why do you do it? Because, like, you don't have any products. You're not selling anything. Seems like it's a lot of time. Um, you never know who's going to be on the show. And we've hired, I think, probably 10 or 15 people through the show and tell. You mm -hmm. were watching Desk of Lady Ada, I think. For when you had your company. Yeah, so I was doing flight controller development for drones, yeah. so STM32 based stuff, and I was going through the whole process of designing boards and getting them manufactured and, and selling them, and one of the things I learned, it was great timing, you were doing Desk of Lady Ada's talking about test jigs, and I remember I watched those, and then I made my own test jigs for the, the stuff that I was making as well. Yay. Yeah, and you were in the chat asking really good questions, and then I don't know if it was from the Adafruit jobs board or something came up and I emailed you and I'm just like, hey, like. Well, yeah, so I, I posted the jobs board and not heard anything. So the next show and tell, I was like, hey, yeah, I'm looking for a job. Yeah, yeah. And then like the next day, you, you already had my email. So yeah, so, so, me an email. so that's one of the things, like if you want to, because like now we're a couple of years in with mm -hmm. CircuitPython. Yeah. And I think people will look at it and be like, wow, like how, how did you get there? Because there's so much going on, there's so many people working on it, but this is how it started out, just like watching a video, yeah, sending an email. And from the get-go, we've been very open about the work we're doing. So you can look back yeah. and see what my first MicroPython changes were and like... Yeah, it's yeah. all there. Uh, it's all open. Like we were talking about the playlist for the CircuitPython weeklies, which we run on Mondays. There are community meetings about yeah. CircuitPython. Uh, we have 96 entries on that playlist, so yeah. we're almost to 100 there as well. Yeah, for the uh, newsletter that we do, uh, that's a couple of years old yeah. already. Um, we have 6,000 plus subscribers. You also helped us start the Discord yep. server. So yeah. we have 13,000 people. I made it happen. Other people suggested it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can do that. Yeah, and one of the things I'll just, uh, we do hug reports um, at Adafruit. One of the things, Scott will actually put in the work because I'm just like, oh, you know what? Like, I really, wanted, I really want to have our community have a Discord server, but I'm like, yep. I don't know if I could run it like, 24 7 yeah and, it you're was, like, and you're it, like oh, i like, was for a while yeah like yeah. um but one thing that we've tried to be really good about within circuit python in general is enabling other people to help us and yeah. so i don't sit in discord 24 hours a day anymore um and yeah i pop in once in a while i help you know i i, I answer questions i scroll yeah. back and i see people chat and so everyone comes in for a couple hours yeah just, so thanks to the, all of the community moderators who yeah. keep an eye on it yeah and of course, if you see something, please ping us. You'll see us in the top right hand side. Um, that's how we do it. We we do it as a community. Yeah. yeah. Like, and here's one little interesting tidbit because we just I finished up these graphics with Bruce, our designer. Um, yeah, I like that one. I so like that one. This is the the high altitude balloon. Okay. Blinka. Oh because yeah. Because someone's using Circuit Python in high altitude balloons now, and you were doing stuff with drones. So I thought I that was. was that looks like was an airlift neat. type thing going on here. But yeah. It's, <laughs> Um, all right, so I thought what we would talk about is a, is a few things. Um, okay. Tomorrow night at 8 p.m., we're going to do a history of Circuit Python because mm -hmm. it's Circuit Python Day. Okay. Uh, Katney, we're going to go through every commit. No, it's kidding. <laughs> no. uh, There's Katney a lot. is going to um, do a recap of her talk that she did yes. uh, at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, but tonight I thought we'd talk about Circuit Python Day and some of the things from the weekly newsletter. Let's so, go. Um, first up, uh, tomorrow's, or it's know, here. in a few hours. We've mentioned it. 8-8-2019, <laughs> and the, I, I think the, the most important thing to remember right now is we're not going to do these rulers forever. So this is the free pie ruler that we're giving out with orders over 49 bucks. That's a smaller tier. Um, mm -hmm. So don't forget to, to do that, because we, once we run out, I don't, I don't know. We'll probably yeah. do, we'll do something else, but we do have... It definitely supplies last starting today. Yeah. Um, on Saturday, Brent, who mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of folks probably know Brent from his work with Adafruit.io. Yeah, here. he's doing a great job. He did a uh, beginner class at NYC Resistor mm -hmm. for Circuit Python, And I, I asked him today, I'm like, oh, how'd it go? And he goes, it was interesting because people came in without any programming experience at all whatsoever. 
And I'm like, you know, you're really lucky because Circuit <laughs> Python was built for that. You can yeah. do something in a couple minutes. You've heard that from me a couple times. Yeah. The first five minutes, like, how far can you go? Yeah. And so I thought I would, like, use some of these um, things that happened in the newsletter to ask you. So w when you think of the best Circuit Python experience, or maybe just the best computing experience for a beginner, mm -hmm. what's, what's important to you as the lead developer of, of now? A full on thing. It's a thing. There's it is logos, a thing. there's a day, yeah. Like Yeah, Vance was like, You have your own day and I'm yeah. like Does that doesn't that make you excited? I'm yeah. like, Well, we got more work to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard it's hard to get a feel for exactly how big the community is. But yeah. like I like I said, it's it's how quickly can you get a person to that moment where they feel empowered that a computer can do something for them. Right. right. So uh, do they have to log in before they can change things? Do they have to install something? Okay, so if they have to log in or something, and like yeah. a bunch of like every hurdle is okay. a hurdle that and some people don't make it. Downloading over. and installing something, right? So we all computers can do that. Well, it kind of reminds me of like you know computers how they used to be where you would like type into DOS and then yeah. like you know the Xerox Park slash uh, Mac Lisa demo, which was like no no you just use it. Right. Like you don't have to read a manual for using a computer anymore. Like you used to be like CD or DIR or whatever. Yeah. Now you just use it. It's just a natural uh, thing that is intuitive for humans. Okay, so no logging in, no download software. What else mm -hmm. is important to you? Uh, the, the upcoming thing is most people don't have laptops with USB. So you've been yeah. experimenting with iPads, but I'm really yeah. interested in the like wireless Bluetooth workflow. Right. Like, uh, my nieces, they have iPads. They don't have a laptop. Yeah. You know, they're eight or nine. They or might 10. just have a phone after that, too. They may not have yeah. full blown computers. Right. So, like, how do you get that first five minute experience for someone like that? Yeah. Like, how can you get them excited for programming easily? Like, it's hard to avoid the app install, but, like, once you do the app install, yeah. how quickly are you to that point where you're controlling it and make things blink? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? I don't know. This is similar to a discussion I had on Twitter with some of the Python folks about like where Python in general should go, yeah. uh, because they're having debates about that as well. Yeah. And I think that accessibility through mobile is really important, um, yeah. and languages are important as well. And that's, that's something that we can continue to improve. I think yeah. CircuitPython.org in different languages would be really cool. We pioneered having error messages in people's languages, which I think is a huge good start. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's important too. You gotta go to people, right? Like, you, yeah. And yeah. I think programmers tend to think about other programmers, but you have to think about the people that aren't programmers, right? Like, there's a lot more people who aren't, and like, what are the barriers to getting them involved? Yeah, one of the things um, that I like when you were thinking about the things that were important for Circuit Python mm -hmm. is the USB drive. And I know, like, we'll do wireless and everything, but the the idea that, a, that your programming device shows up as a USB drive, you hit save, automatically restarts and run the code, you just save so much time. So within a minute, you can plug any of these devices into a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. You don't have to download anything. Nope. You can just use a text editor. You yep. hit save, and you're doing something that... If you're in, like, Arduino world, it's probably 20, 30 minutes before you get to that step. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So let's keep moving. Yeah. Um, so speaking of localization and international. Yeah. Um, so we, we said, oh, let's, yeah, this is awesome. yeah, we said, let's do a circuit Python day and let's see, let, like we're also running an Adafruit and like, this is the first year we thought we would just like, okay, we're carving this out yep. as, as a day. Yeah. Um, and let's see uh, what happens. Well, a lot of things already happened. So this is from the Delhi Technical University for Women. They sent us some photos. They did theirs a little bit earlier, August 1st. Mm -hmm. And so there is a ton of photos. I put this in the newsletter. Yeah, fun times. But yeah. We got um, temporary tattoos. Yeah, look at this. And and so they're they're already <laughs> doing workshops, and they're able to do um, a lot of things with the, the stuff we sent along. But what we found already is, like, internationally, I think it's because of the multi-language support and also the fact that we have something that works on all sorts of different computers yeah. is, is really helpful. Um, but worldwide, uh, it, it seems like it's happening faster because I've lived through a couple rounds of microcontrollers with adoptions, mm -hmm. it seems like. So good work. Um, we got that going on. Um, there's also an event this weekend in Lebanon, in Israel, in China, 
uh, three or four maker spaces in the U.S. That's so, so cool. So yeah, th this, this is, is just our first one too. And it's all <laughs> yeah, and like a lot of folks are doing it on the weekend because uh, eight eight is Thursday. Right. Um, we gave everyone off at Adafruit uh, Friday. Friday. <laughs> so, so Adafruit, it's official holiday now. Observed. At Adafruit too. Yeah. Yeah, observed. And then this weekend is when a lot of folks are yep. doing the events. So keep um. Keep sending us stuff. We'll, we'll add it to the newsletters and more. Yeah, we'd love to help get people to your events. Yeah. All right. So other Python and hardware news. We're up to 410. Mm. What's 410 about? It's all about speed. Yeah. This was a happy coincidence. Look at how fast this Blinka is. Yeah, Blinka love has, this logo. We need stickers of this. Yeah. Zoom. At first, we didn't have goggles, and Scott said, I need goggles, so we yeah. got goggles. Yeah. I'm All concerned right, about so, Blinka's eyes. So what, what, well, what, what were the reasons <laughs> that we got such a big speed boost? Because it's significant. What What happened? So there was two things going on. One was I had done a lot of display work. Yeah. And when we had done that display work, we were like, we just needed to show up on the screen. And we had chosen to al always update all the pixels. Yeah. Turns out there's a lot of pixels. There's a lot. So and then we're getting new boards that we've shown off even, that coming out, which is, we have twice as many pixels. Even more pixels. The most so, pixels. Uh, one of the things that kind of hit uh, master, which is like the leading edge or the main branch of CircuitPython is uh, updating only a few of the pixels that yeah. changed, which means uh, everything happens a whole lot faster because all the pix pixels that stay the same uh, can stay the same. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that was one kind of display specific improvement. And then we had, um, I'm trying to remember the person's name, but one of our community members filed an issue and said, hey, I did some profiling and the SAMD51 is still a lot slower than this other uh, Pi board, I think is what it was. Yeah. Which but is, like the megahertz didn't count. They're like, yeah, the math like, doesn't work. Yeah, like this other board's like 70 megahertz and yours is 120 and you're still slower. And like, I guess Dan felt a bit embarrassed by that. Um, we've deep, been deliberate. That's what Dan said. He's like, I was embarrassed, so I wanted to figure yeah. out what was going on. So we're, we're still yeah. being very deliberate to like not spend a lot of time on performance. Uh, because still had ease share. of use is, yeah. is important, but because of this uh, person bringing it up and, and giving us a way to measure it, yeah. um, Dan said, like, look, I'll take a few hours and I'll see what the differences are. And he, he found a, a config option uh, for MicroPython that makes the, the guts of running your Python code faster. Yeah. Like two to five times faster. Like dash dash make faster. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, did you turn on that compile flag? Oh, you basically you turned on the virtual turbo button. Right. So uh, there's it a did, couple. There's like three or four things that were. Yeah. That we so found. It, it took a little bit more space. So the other one of the, the balancing acts that we have are not just performance, but like how big is the code that we have to when you download a UF2, like how big is that thing? And then we have to worry about RAM as well. But in this case, we didn't have to worry about RAM. Uh, but it did take like a, a kilobyte more of code space, but we were like, that's well worth it. And we we always like managed to jump through some hoops and make the space that we need when yeah. we need it. Yeah. Okay. So some speed ups, so display speed ups and core speed ups, all good stuff. Yeah, and the core speed ups apply to everything, which was like really yeah. great work by Dan. And like, that's the payoff you want. You want three hours of focused work to get yeah. a, a we also had like it that. in four and in four O we had um, big memory improvements as well right i think was it three that had the big memory improvements i think it was like the long lived stuff like the fragmentation yeah i think i just remember like i think like auto uh, uh, auto uh gcing after import and stuff oh I think, yeah i think, that I think was a three. couple things came up in three later three and yeah. in four yeah i mean ram is is going to continue to be our challenge yeah. until we get into these really Massive exciting, uh, spoiler alert, Teensy 4 class yeah. things, but um, still, well, the info the 751 has this a fair bit, it has the yeah, yeah. K of RAM, yep, so it's pretty good. But of course, more RAM is more better, more better, yeah. And I'm, um, I'm trying to remake a lot of the classics, so I want to do like an Encarta style encyclopedia with Python, hypercard type stuff, yeah. And so, the latest updates, I can do lots of graphics, lots of sound, and it just like flies yeah so. it, it, it's Great a lot update. faster and uh my secret goal is to make a commodore 64 basically so okay take a usb keyboard plug it into a circuit python device take an hdmi cable plug it into your tv and you have a full right. circuit python setup okay yeah, I, I can make pitfall I, I showed scott the sony magic cap yeah oh, sorry the magic link and yeah. i'm like one day <laughs> we're gonna have a screen size 
480 yeah. by 320 and we'll be able to do you know piper card like things on it and totally so, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna make one and we'll we'll set up you know with, when we get this working maybe with the pipe portal and uh we'll send it over to uh megan smith yeah <laughs> oh, with a little postcard app all right next up uh so kat needed a talk and we're going to do a, a, a version of it tomorrow at 7 p.m and this is changing lives through open source passion and mentoring so if you want to figure out or find out her life changed um how katney ended up here at adafruit you'll be able to listen on that and i wanted just to read a little bit and trying to learn python i stumbled into a passion i never considered my path began with learning python on hardware through mentorship of help and friends i began to flourish since then i've continued contributing in ways i never thought possible between code community and becoming a mentor myself this is the story of my journey and how mentorship can change lives all right that talk is awesome highly recommend it yes speaking of talks so um, there's a bunch of Pi badges out in the world now and people are using them for exactly what we wanted to make your own custom badge when you go to an event so check out this is uh kate and Kate's a conference director at PyCon AU, which just happened mm -hmm. uh, last weekend. Also lots of great talks. Other news, this is a big deal for us, um, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we saw this tweet, it's like, I'm writing a book of CircuitPython for beginners with Adafruit, Circuit Playground Express in Japanese. It will be out in September. This is the cover of the book. And it's also covering Moo. Yeah, so ah, cool. Ah, it's from Steam Tokyo, and this is, this is, this is the CircuitPython book. We want. Which is exactly, this is what I'm looking <laughs> yeah. for here. This is what we're this, looking like, for. Cyber girl with like triangles. If you're looking for the aesthetic, this is it. Yeah. All she's right. just she's and she's like controlling this levitating circuit playground. <laughs> um, next up, I'll talk briefly about this. This will be in the newsletter coming up next week and some blog posts. This is PiperCard. So Entol uh, Nicholas is working on a HyperCard inspired GUI framework for beginners. So if you wanted to make an interface on desktop software and device devices. It's kind of hard, but he's working on this really neat constrained GUI framework. And so if you're into a hypercard back from And we the totally 80s, tricked him into doing this. <laughs> like we were going to do this and we started yeah. and, and then we're like, hey, check this out. And we totally nerd sniped him and now he's doing it. <laughs> he's doing a lot of good work on yeah. this. Yeah. And he's doing a better job than I would have done. Okay. <laughs> I love being a nerd sniper. Yeah. Um, so speaking of iOS devices, so iOS 13 beta is out, mm -hmm. and the thing we noticed with beta one was um, it erased it, disk drives. When you when you <laughs> plugged in a, a device with a file system, like a CircuitPython device, um, it would just erase all the files. Yeah, not so fun. That's exciting though. Um, and it would like rename them to like bizorked names. Yeah. So we um, we we filed a bug report and we emailed our contact at Apple and they fixed it. And so we have um, a, a series of tests and more that we've been doing, and so far so good. So in September, I think, there's more mass storage updates for um, iOS, so you can plug it into like external hard drive and you can like see all the files on it. But as of right now, this second, you can edit and save Python code on an iOS device. Which is pretty so, exciting because yeah. it wasn't something that, I mean, eventually I guess it was inevitable it would happen, but using USB like mass storage and HID and MIDI, these are universal. Like yeah. CDC is actually not a well supported USB peripheral compared to HID and mass storage, which is just like so standardized. Mm -hmm. And what's neat is being able to use mass storage has like unlocks all these other devices like Chromebooks and Android yep. devices and now iOS. So it seems inevitable to me like there will be a coding app that will, you will be able to plug in a circuit playground in and type it and maybe even blocks. Mm -hmm. And there might even be, you know, you would go to a website that has like a Blockly type editor right. and then save the output to your Circuit Playground mm -hmm. Express. So this could be part of, you know, doing Bluetooth. There's still a couple thousand existing Circuit Playground Expresses. Oh, yeah. This could be an intermediate step for people who right. want to write code. You can do it on an iOS tablet. I know you can always do it on Android already. Already works, but there's a <laughs> lot of iOS devices out there. Not all Androids either. Not all Androids. Yeah. I, I was talking with the Microbit folks, and they're like, "You got to be careful. Some of those Androids they just don't have great Bluetooth stacks or all that stuff." Or, yeah. the, or the user can't update them, or their devices are hosed and yep. they're just not yeah. able. When to. When I was on Alicia yeah. White's uh, podcast, her partner said that he <laughs> works at Fitbit. Yep. He says he says like a quarter of the engineering staff is just dealing with every different kind of Android oh, yeah, Bluetooth stack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hopefully they're fixing it all for us. <laughs> um, uh, next up, in speaking of uh, some of Nicholas's work, what we wanted to do was, uh, on some of our videos, the editor that we use is Moo. Mm -hmm. So I asked Noah and Pedro, can you just like slice out when you're about to use Moo for some of the projects? Because I wanted to have something for Nicholas to, 
to show around. It's like, well, what can you do with Moo? Stuff like this. So here's a little snippet of one of our latest projects, and it uses Moo. Moo. This build has motion-activated sound effects and LED animations. You can make this fit your project by customizing the colors or adding different sound effects. The code is written in Adafruit CircuitPython, which makes it excellent for beginners. You can upload code and recharge the battery with the built-in USB port. The code is nicely commented and it's easy to adjust values like the speed of the animation or the sensitivity of the accelerometer. Use the Moo editor in Serial Console to get print statements. This makes iteration much faster so you don't have to compile your code like an Arduino. It works like a USB storage device so you can drag and drop files right on the drive. Okay, and we briefly talked about this. This was... Um, Port Key. It's from John, John G. John G. Mm -hmm. worked on this. So that's a newsletter. You can also find out a little bit more. Um, I want to try this out because we have some pipe portals around here that we use for a lot of things. Okay. Dan's working on this um, e ink, ink stuff. More. He's been doing a lot of ink projects. We did the ink maze. Uh, we did the ink reader. And now we're doing like ink graphics. Um, and he's actually doing these magic eye displays, which show up really well on e-ink, and I totally yeah. cannot see them so at all. Can, yeah, <laughs> if you look at them, I was telling I Scott don't. earlier, I can, at, at night when I get really tired, I see them perfectly. Right I now, used to be able to. I <laughs> did not see a thing. Right now I'm pretty you caffeinated. Have like, you have so to like cross your eyes. Yeah. I have bad vision, maybe. I, don't know. So I mean, I see that there's something going on, but it's like I don't see. Oh, there it is. You yeah, see? it's like the circular. Yeah. I have no Maybe I'm sure I look, glasses? Yeah, yeah, there's Blinka. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I look really funky <laughs> with my <laughs> eyes crossed. You know what's funny is I, I always thought like, people were lying when they said they could see stuff. I was just like, I was like, you fucking with me? <laughs> <laughs> so what it looks it like? It looks like snow. So it, I know what it's supposed to look like. It's like a, it's like a pushed it out. It looks like cell animation when you look at the different layers. So yeah. it looks like yeah, those pieces think, that are going. I think the trick that is like you can start it here and then pull it away until you see it because like, you have to cross your eyes. No, my eyes, I think it. I have astigmatism or something. Mm -hmm. I can't see it. Okay. Whatever, man. All right. They look good. Also, around the web and more. Um, no. <laughs> Jackie asked, what's your absolute best swag you've ever received? And uh, the PyCon Circuit Playgrounds that we did this with This was unprompted. Un we did not yeah. know this was happening. I was actually like, oh, what is this thread? And I was like, hey, check it out. Yeah. Circuit Python right. kit and socks. All right. DEF CON is this weekend, and people are using Circuit Python for all sorts of badges and more. So thank you, who all the folks have been tagging us. We're going to try to capture all of them and put them in our newsletter and our blog because it's an easy thing to add. You just get a SAMD processor, and you're almost on your you're way there. You're pretty much or golden. Or NRF52840. Yeah. And I'm going to say a thing. I love badges, but what kills me is whenever it's like, okay, here's a badge. Don't forget to bring your J-Link. It's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> I do pack a J-Link, but not everybody does. Pro tip, UF2 is awesome. And it's, yeah, it's like you or don't need to do Here's a crazy a tool port. chain that's going to take nine hours to install. Do that while you're at an event. Yeah, and like, like and then really you have to good. upload things. Oh, and you have to like convert it. Circuit Python. It's so <laughs> elegant. I think when the ESP32 S2 comes out, that's when we're going to see. Like everyone's going to switch over to using that because it's got that Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's got the USB. US, USB. It will have a UF2 bootloader for it or whatever. And then you'll yeah. be able to edit stuff because it's like if you're at a conference, it's loud. You're busy. You're, the Wi-Fi kind of sucks. You're mm -hmm. being sniffed. You're on like the wall of sheep. <laughs> trying to like, you know, what I mean? like it, it's so complicated to do, and I think Circuit Python will be an excellent. We're yeah. positioned well for the badge All technology. Right. Uh, we released upcoming. a guide, and it showed how to add a board to Circuit Python.org, as well as making it an official board. And then board. someone followed it, and Keith yeah. did. And Keith has a board called Snack. And we even have one. Yep, we sell one out. We can show this off on the overhead if you want to. So do this that. this is a really Python. Snack is a board, and it's Snack. also a language. So it's a very small Python-like language, but it also the Snack boards can also run. And it's open source hardware. Yeah. Ooh. It's super neat, and uh, it's meant for driving Lego motors. Yeah. So Keith does, I think, first robotics, or he has a, a robot, the mm -hmm. Lego robot league. So he wanted something that worked with um, really low-cost hardware. Um, older Arduinos, things like that. But also, since he uses SAMD, it works with CircuitPython. So mm -hmm. this is official, officially supported board, and it's now on circuitpython.org slash downloads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Brian, also known as Sedacious, who uh, does a lot of stuff here with us at Adafruit. You're probably 
or you definitely will be using some of his board soon. Um, mm-hmm. He's going to talk at Pi Bay. It is August 15th, 16th, and it's in San Francisco. Do check it out if you're in the area. Other events coming up. Um, well, two things. Hackaday is 15 years old, so it's a site I started. I have nothing to do with it now other than um, I like that it's not terrible. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. You, know, nice cause you don't have you don't have any control once you you know okay I'm going to give this thing away I mean it's 15 it's, it's basically fi- it's, it's old, t- old, old enough to drive it's old enough yeah it's old enough to slam its door and say you don't understand me no um, not a hack yeah I hate uh, you but we do have um, Hackaday Supercon coming up we're going to try to do something kind of interesting and special we're not ready to announce it yet but Scott you're going to go yeah I'm going you're going to go I'm excited to chat with folks and yeah. I applied to give a talk about Game Boys and Circuit Python. okay Hopefully they'll accept it and show off whatever the latest and greatest of that is. Okay. okay. And with that... Non-stop. blink a blink a blink a blink That is the Python mm-hmm. on Hardware News. Cool. Okay. Let's it is jam-packed. Going. So much going on. Yeah, we're going to keep moving. All right, pack the mailbag. Um, I wanted to do this one this week. So this just got tweeted to us. But um, the theme, I think, is like how and why we do things. And one of the things we do is a newsletter. And this is from Justin. Justin writes in, or tweets out, uh, Adafruit. The Adafruit Daily puts so much, uh, so many other daily emails to shame. Thankful for the obvious human-centric approach to technology from your team. Yay! So that's what we like to hear. There's a few reasons for that. One, Why? it means that we're, we're writing good newsletters that people want to read every day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Two, we're not doing the things that everyone else does, which is when you go to a website and it pops up a giant thing and says sign up for our newsletter, don't no, like that. I don't like that. Also, don't like going to a website and ordering something, and then I get a newsletter forever. Don't like it. Right. I also don't like to have to be super clever and make my own, like, fill plus site mm-hmm. I went to at Gmail. You know, like, you, because you, yeah. you're like, I'm going to trick, I'm going to, no, we don't, I'm we don't. trap them. You can always do that if you want, but yeah. we don't sell, we market, we yeah. use... Your email. So it's what we decided to do was make a completely separate site called adafruitdaily.com. No mm-hmm. risk. And we'll, we'll never spam anyone. We don't we do not do anything weird like that. We never will. You can get a newsletter with your Adafruit account, but it's only the new products newsletter, and it's off by default. You have to go into your account, and you have to do a bunch of work to do that. You so mean it's opt-in? It's only opt-in. And, yes. it's, like, and it's like difficult to yeah, opt-in. Yeah, maybe it's <laughs> like it's, it's like not, it's like you can't even, it doesn't even automatically yeah. tell you to click it. You're like, you have to go and hide and find it. So um, if you go to for Daily, we have a bunch of newsletters. We're going to be adding some more soon. Um, but we're always going to take that approach. That's our promise. Um, and I, the way I write content is I imagine the people who are writing it for us. So when I do the Python on Hardware newsletter, I, I'm like, well, I know Lamore's going to read. I know Scott's going to read. I know Dan's going to read. I know Katty's going to read. I, like, there's, <laughs> I write it for these folks. And it turns out if you, if you write it for a group of people that like something, there's a good chance that there's another group of people out there right. that also like it. So that, that's, that's been the philosophy, and it's good that someone noticed that we really do spend a lot of time on this. It's very easy to do a terrible job. Yeah. It's actually a little <laughs> bit more work to do a good job now. Correct. Okay. Next up. Um, this also, this is a mailbag thing, too. Okay. So you were on the cover of Wired a long time ago, and in 2017, um, I picked up a copy of Wired uh, with uh, Sacha on it. Yeah. And I've been holding on to this on Wired... To forever so we did a trade we sent him a wire with you on it that was signed yes and i sent him the microsoft the wired cover and we traded and i did a postage uh return thing so here it is so these are this, these are in our collection now <laughs> and this is real yeah and we we had to invent a whole bunch of technology to get this to yeah. happen so mission accomplished we got it and now i can add this to my collection do you want me to show them yeah yeah Yay. Yay. <laughs> so thank you microsoft team and, and sacha who we recently um okay. chatted with <laughs> the collection is almost complete. okay good okay except time travel time okay all right time travel got some news and more uh first up we did a machine learning monday yeah and on Machine Learning Monday, we decided to uh, run our own server because that's a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> I, well, I'm experimenting. You know, we have the, the guides I've been writing up as I've been doing TensorFlow stuff. And some of the guides, you know, may get deprecated as new technology comes out. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's good to have it documented somewhere because it's a very arcane stuff. So this week, mm-hmm. what I worked on was um, how to run the open speech uh, data collection service that 
Yeah. You see a little bit of trickery to install, but a step-by-step how to set up the Google Cloud service and bucket to create this open Adafruit. speech recording setup that you can use to record Adafruit. your own custom words. And it, it's like you don't Digi-key. have to use a yeah. service, but it makes it easy because Digi-key. you've got the button and it encodes it and it works on all the browsers. Here's what it sounds like. Adafruit. 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 DigiKey. DigiKey. You can send people to the URL and then save the files. And then the next step I have to do, which you have to figure out, is <laughs> you have to convert these like d- files, which are like in Opus encoded OG wrappers, which is very <laughs> exciting. And it turns out that's the most browser compatible. Huh. Audio streaming format, like believe me, I dug down. I was like, can I just change it to like waves? No, you can't. So I have to ch- convert those into waves using FFmpeg and then upload them, save them to my Docker image, and then I have to change the Docker image config files so it knows to look for those wave files. And then we should be able to train a micro speech learning model that recognizes the words Adafruit and DigiKey. Yeah, and one of the reasons we're doing this is. You got it. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. So one of the reasons we're doing this, this takes hours is though. Um, we, we wanted to bring that circuit Python-like experience to machine learning, which does not exist right now. It does not exist. And so what we wanted to do was, well, when you plug it in, does it show up as a USB drive? Yes. Right. When you plug it in, can you drag a TensorFlow Lite model called cat? Yes. Could you just say the word cat? Yeah. And then the, the next portion is, can you personalize it? Can you make it recognize your own voice? So um, right now we're just starting with Adafruit and DigiKey. But we're getting we're getting closer and closer to that like first five minutes, not turning everyone off of mm-hmm. machine learning because mm-hmm. it is intimidating. It's amazing, right? It, it's intimidating. You can get on really far if you make something easy to do. Yeah, and so right now that that's where we're at, and we'll yeah. see we'll see what happens next with this. But um, so far, so good. Yeah, so far, I mean, we've done more. We've done a lot. We're just like taking the hard coded demo and then make it so you can load files from the file system. So you just drag a TF Lite file. Yeah. So that's made it really easy because we've generated all, we've generated like a half a dozen models so far. But instead of having like the, the traditional way of doing it is you like actually access D it and then you paste it as a header yeah. include, which is like, you know, it works, right? Yeah. Like it's a header include, but yeah. like it's just tough to test. So now we can load it from disk thanks to the Arcada work. And eventually we'll get this working with CircuitPython. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so for machine learning, the other thing that we're interested in is um, I think people all agree that we're probably going to end up meeting robots that we code. We're probably going to end up talking to them. So we should probably do a pretty good job, <laughs> right? Like, we've all seen science fiction movies. We should probably, like, the, the code that we write, like, if things don't work out, it's our fault. Because yeah, come we, and meet you. You know, we should think about who's going to use this AI. How is it going to be used? Is it open source? Is it transparent? So al- although this isn't um, directly related, we, we do have our, like, make robot friend, not robot enemy. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be releasing our latest video, RS for Robots, from our circuit playground series. Oh, I wish we had like a teaser video. We do that. have a teaser video. Yeah, cool. But but as as we're doing these machine learning stuff, we we we're very conscious about what type of projects that we're going to do. Like we're not going to do one that like shoots things. We're just not. Like, yeah. That, also everyone else got that covered. They totally have it covered. Like bubble blowing, Adafruit. That's us. Ease of use, <laughs> you us. Know, personalization, accessibility. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. You know, yes. Other stuff, open source. No. Yeah, open yeah, source. Yes. Yeah. So here is a world premiere of the next video in our series. We're up to R. So we're, we're running out of letters. Here we go. Isaac Asimov was writing to big dog cyborg standing there flying a drone. Electro's headed to the first convention. Getting there a GPS, but exapods at home. Make robot friend. Not robot enemy. Make robot fun. And don't hurt no one. Coming soon. All right. Okay. Hub wanted. This is from jobs.adafruit.com. Um, if you have skills, post them up. You can be like Scott, get a job. Yeah. Um, and uh, we also have folks that are looking for people. This is from Tech Ahoy, and it's in Ridgewood, Queens, New York. It's a makerspace technology creative instructor. It's part time. Check it out, jobs.adafruit.com. And uh, if you are a company, it's free. We moderate all of them. 
Um, that's one of the things about jobs boards. If you don't do a good job with them, they're just all spammy yeah. and scammy. So we review each one. Yes. Um, I did want to talk about um, what you, Lady Ada, and Scott are looking for in the world of Circuit Python because we're we're always looking for people. Um, what are you currently looking for if someone has yeah. skills in that? What are you world? looking for? What are we looking for? I think we're always looking for everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, you had to narrow it down. If I narrowed it down. To less than everything. I think it would be awesome to get more C contributors. Okay. Um, there's a lot of work that Dan and I do uh, that so would core be nice code. to to offload a bit. Um, we're always looking for folks who are experienced with Python. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the contributors we have have come from Arduino land and don't necessarily know Pythonic ways. Yeah. So always having a like, experienced set of Python eyes to look over our stuff is always helpful. We're always looking for translations. Uh, we have 11 now, but it would be great to have as many as we can fit. And keeping them up to, um, up to date, too. Keeping them the, up to date yeah. is, is great. Um, and some of the translations we have may not be full coverage. Yeah. Um, it is kind of a moving target, but uh, it's always good to have more folks doing that as well. Um, guides tutorials, so if you do projects, post them up. We love to see them and, and see them documented well and the code available. So yeah, um, it's a little bit of everything, uh, yeah. but hopefully that gives some ideas and, and uh, hooks to people to say like, yeah. oh, I could do that. I guess the other thing is if there's a really interesting chip and you're familiar with tiny USB, yeah, getting those, because that's the first step with getting CircuitPython on. Right, on so if you're, if you're an embedded C developer and you have a chip family that you really like and it has built-in USB, we're always looking to bring tiny USB uh, to that platform because that's a prerequisite to getting CircuitPython on that platform. And it's helpful for you as a developer because chances are when you're using a chip with a USB stack, you know, it might have CDC and it might have HID, but it probably won't have mass storage, it probably right. won't have MIDI, it probably won't have web USB. So if you want to get all those really cool peripherals, uh, the um, endpoints uh, mm -hmm. capabilities, um, getting teeny USB working will help you in the long run because you'll have this stack. So it's Yeah, and it's MIT open source. So you yes. can take that stack with you when you go from platform to Correct. platform, which Buy, is not usually it. the case. Yeah. Yes, usually, usually vendor ones are open, but they say explicitly you can only use them with their chips. Or there's like weird rules about when, you know, yeah, they're not truly open source licensed. Right. Um, and you can't contribute back to them, of course. Whereas we take contributes, yeah. contributions all the time. Yeah. We're adding more chips, like, every month. And I always say, like, if you, like, I will always take the time to get people contributing. So if you have questions about how to do it, if you have stuff that, like, you made a pull request, but it hasn't been looked at, reach out to me or some of the other core folks. And, and we make that a priority. Yeah. And we've been getting good contributions as well. It's nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep moving along. All right, uh, it's open source hardware time. Uh, we're an open source hardware company, and we're doing lots of things in the world of open source. Here is kind of big news for us, I think. Um, I have, uh, I do not have a headline generator, but I do kind of write similar things. <laughs> and uh, last night, uh, I was about to go to sleep, and I saw C tweeted, and I'm just like, I need to write about this. So the headline was, Feather takes flight at Seed Studio. C moved to the Feather format. Woohoo! Yeah, and I got that. Thing you like the, the castellation. Castellation. Oh yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. interesting. I didn't think of doing it that way. So I was like, hmm. So like this comes uh, out uh, now means the right where it's the, the same pin. There's yeah. Adafruit that does Feather. You did a great open spec. Mm -hmm. Anyone can use yes. it. Yes. There's Particle. They moved to Feather. Yep. SparkFun moved to Feather. Yep. Seed moved to Feather. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we have an entire list on GitHub.com/slash/Adafruit/slash/Awesome-Feather that Mike's been maintaining. And there's hundreds of boards, hundreds of wings. Yes, and what's really together. cool about this feather that Seed made is, first off, it's like the first USB-C feather. Mm. That's true. This was really neat. Love um, USB-C. Wait, is this SparkFun, there, is it one of their feather boards Maybe. that they did a USB-C? Yeah, but it's not the exact same. You okay. know, it's not the, f it's like longer. This one right. is the first one in this, that size, the, the, yeah. the two by 0.9 inch. Okay. Another thing I really like about this one is, um, it's got the castellations, which are really neat. I'm gonna maybe <laughs> which see you've heard from me. For yeah, a while. but no, but I was like thinking, like, how would I do it? But it's like doing it this way, which I've seen it done other ways, but with the long pads, is right. kind of a nice. We actually makes it a little easier to solder in general. So maybe hmm. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Okay. And Sweet. also, this mo module is the W six hundred, 
I've never used it. I probably will not ever get to use it. I've just been, I've, I'm kind of set with Wi-Fi modules for now. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad because people would have asked like, hey, can you make a feather with it? I'm like, I'm not going to have time to. So what's really cool is seeing Seed add this mm -hmm. to, like they created a new feather with a new module design, you know, takes that off of like my plate. Like I don't have to do it now. Right. And um, it benefits the community because they'll have, they have more options now for Wi-Fi feathers. So this is, Neat. Also, there's a user button, which is kind of nice. Okay. So we'll continue to catalog all of these. We'll keep putting them on. Awesome feather. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that you... I remember when we came up with this idea, and we didn't, later did the spec, and you just put it out there. And yeah. And it was... It was uh, Particle was like, let's do this. And I was like, it's it's there for you. You can do some single-sided, double-sided. There's the, the Linux uh, feather on... Crowd supply. Supply. They, they just hit their funding they goal their today. Funding goal, but it's closing today, so if you want one of the Linux feathers, uh, you have yeah. to subscribe today to okay. get it. All right, so speaking of open source hardware, October is... Open hardware open, month. Open hardware month. So okay. we'll, do a, we'll do a lot of stuff during that month. Every month is open hardware month here. It's true. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll do a lot of things. Um, we'll probably do a show just to, dedicated to just sure. specific... Uh, community people and companies that are doing open source hardware. Yes, we'll do that. I mean, that's how I got into it, right? Like, I learned hardware by looking at schematics that Lamore had done and Yay. K Town yeah. had done, and Yay. of the devices I was using. Like, open hardware is the way to go. It's working out. Our other news is um, speaking of open source hardware, we, we joined the Risk Foundation, yeah. and we have a quick video. That I'm gonna, gonna level show. up. This is yeah. me and you when we were younger. Yeah. Risk architecture is gonna change everything. Risk is good. Okay, so if you go to the Risk site, you could see Adafruit's on there. Yay! And risk five. Yeah, Risk, risk five. five. And we decided to join the foundation because you were, I, 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 I'm around you quite a bit, and I see <laughs> what you do at night. You're reading lots of data sheets. You're reading tons of things. Yeah. And you notice pretty big trends, and you and you said, I think Risk is going to be one of the one of the bets that we should. Cool. I like, I'm liking the Risk Five. I mean, it's cool. It's been around for a bit. There's mm -hmm. the High Five chip. Now there's, there's the K210 chip. Yeah, well, this is some samples Kendrite that we chip, got. which is an AI chip. I think it's interesting because I think there's going it's going to enable more companies to have custom chips because they don't have to go through the ARM licensing process. They can just mm -hmm. grab this core and yeah. get going. We even got a Kendrite dev. Yeah, so this is. Board. I have a. Do you want to show this yeah, I have a photo of it on there, but we can also see if it recognizes. How do I Scott. turn this on? It is, you have to turn it on here. Oh, yeah. sorry. So, can, so this is uh, Ken, Kendrite uh, K210. Yeah. System test. So and let's see if it recognizes. Did I plug in the wrong thing? Uh, you want to just Oh, you know again. what, I think I. Turn it off and back on again? Oh, uh, shoot, I messed with this. Don't oh, mess no. with that. I messed with it. Oh, man, I messed with it. And well, that's why I had a Pots photo are so fun it. to just twirl. I know, but I didn't realize it would. Deep yeah. test. DVP test. Okay, so that's gonna. I think you have to turn the knob to the other. One. I know. I know. I'm. This is totally my fault. I'm so sorry. Am System I human? Test. Demo face section. Okay. okay. The only. Hey, look! You recognize Scott. It's Scott. Okay. Scott, your person. My person. I'm a person. All right. So okay. Sorry. Uh, we have faces. It was actually yeah. the AI was whether I could get this working, and I'm. I passed the the test. So anyhow, mm -hmm. um, these chips are pretty small, and we're probably yeah. gonna do a feather. We'll see. Um, but part part st step one was like, let's join the foundation so we can connect with other people that are working on hardware. There's a lot of machine learning and AI stuff. So my question to the both of you is, if we were to, <laughs> if we could wave a magic wand, what would a, a a risk chip need, or what would it have to do to work with Circuit Python? USB, please. Because I have this a graphic. High-speed USB. I got this graphic. High-speed USB. The Let's go the whole Let's way. Let's do it. The graphic is finished, which is great. <laughs> right. Um, but there's a lot of other work to so do. So having high-speed USB, I think if you so had... So for like it, video out? For... Yeah. Video for, up the USB link? For you, yeah, but just in general, just having USB would be great. Yeah. And also having... I don't think there's any chips with ADCs in them. So that'd be yeah, pretty cool, too. Yeah, the mixed analog digital. DAX, I can live without. But, ha you know, because you can always do PWM. But having ADCs is kind of key for a lot of projects. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I've, I've run across the Risk v stuff a lot with talking to the FPGA folks. Yeah, because they so, use that as a core. Tiny FPGA, Luke, is doing a lot of work okay. um, with Risk v because there's a, yeah. mo a number of implementations to, designed for the open FPGA toolchain stuff. Yeah, Sci-5 
has some boards that they have. There's one that's Arduino shaped mm-hmm. that they released. They have some yep. chips and stuff. And then Keith, who does Snack, recently just started working there. So like, I think it's gonna happen. Yeah, the other thing right. is RAM. That that we need RAM. The okay. chip has like I think it's 16 kilobytes of RAM, which mm. is quite tight. R- rough. Okay. Um, so a right, little bit more K RAM would min. would be awesome. Too. Yeah. Okay. That's what that's what we want. All right, moving right along. Uh, speaking of USB, we did a demo with Web USB, USB, Circuit Playground Express, and Arduino. So it's yeah. not working. And uh, hey. we, yeah, we have uh, a, a video that we did earlier in the week. So I'm just going to play a snippet from it. We have. Circuit Playground Express plugged into this computer. We have Tiny USB. This is running Chrome. I'm going to bring up the browser. This is the okay. browser. All right. So the first this thing, the first thing we, we got to do um, is uh, here's us. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hi. Um, but I'm going to put us away just for a second until we get this going. So first Hi. up, we want to connect. Connect. So when you connect, it's going to say, "Hey, here's devices that have the right kind of descriptor that you can connect to." So I'm going to connect. Connect to it. All right. And then it turns green. To let you know, oh. hey, you know, I've connected. But, and now, I, but I want to do something else like change the color. Easy. All through a web interface? Click, no. click the green dot. And this is just a classic color picker for JavaScript, yeah. right? This isn't, what's neat is that you can use all the stuff that has built into JavaScript already. And. Uh, oh, so I'm just moving this around. Oh, I didn't know, yeah. It it's immediately sends the colors out. That's so cool. So. Right, Bam. So, so we'll have some more. Live now. We'll have some more demos. I want to do an a operation game that you plug in. So you play it on the web, but it'll, <laughs> it'll, it's attached to you. It'll shock you? And it'll, well, it'll just like buzz. It'll just buzz you. It'll just be like. Tactic feedback. No, it'll just be like. Bzz, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, next up. Guides. We have 1,947 yeah, so guides. Yes, we have a lot of guides for this week. Um, kicking off on the bottom, we have the Adafruit Pi Ruler Guide by Katni. Thanks for putting that together. She also did the Circuit Python. Um, port for this board. She did quite a bit with this board. Uh, it's a lot like a Trinket M0, but like we said, it has four capacitive touchpads, four extra LEDs, and of course, it's a ruler! Uh, and we'll have maybe a game or two written for this um, Pi Ruler. And so if you pick one up um, or you get one free with your order, check out the guide for information on how to use CircuitPython. We have two guides for the two breakouts that are live this week. The DS3502 i squared C digital potentiometer, which is a nice uh, 10K potentiometer, which is I squared C digital. You can control over I squared C, but also you can set the uh, default startup resistance. Mm. So it's like you can set it and forget it type thing. It's got non-volatile RAM. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive than some DigiPots, but I think it's worth it. Uh, and it's uh, quick compatible with those Stemma QT connectors. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Also the VCNL 4040 proximity and LUX sensor. Uh, we've carried a couple of VCNL sensors. This is the latest version to come out from Vichay. Um, it's got a proximity sensor that works from like zero to 20 centimeters, which is quite nice. Um, we were actually talking about um, some accessibility projects that could use this sensor. Uh, so Bill Binko will hopefully love this sensor. And uh, it's also got a LUX sensor built in. So it's kind of got twofer, light and proximity, also chainable over I squared. See, so you've got JP's project, the Plantagachi. Uh, so let's take uh, gaming for the Pi Badge and Pi Gamer with MakeCode Arcade, and now it's that hardware to it. So it's one of the things you can do that you cannot do with the Switch. So you're like, why should I just get a Switch? Because mm-hmm. you can't connect a soil sensor to it like you can with the Pi Badge. Uh, it's really easy to make a plant Tamagotchi so you can take care of this plant, and it makes you take care of a plant in real life. So to water your cyber plant, you water the real plant. To light, mm-hmm. uh, give light to your cyber plant, again, you light, uh, give sunlight to your real plant. So uh, kind of, can I, we've been doing a couple of 4-H projects. This could be a good 4-H project as well. Yeah, we have the 4-H Clover kits, and um, turns out they actually grow. We, they grow like crazy. We're, we're posting a photo of it. Actually, it's like a forest now. Oh, wow. So, nice. yeah. These, these clovers are yeah, it tur- like Turns weeds. out it's, it, there's real seeds in there, and they really do grow. They grow. <laughs> uh, like I, we talked about how to set up Google App Engine uh, for recording speech for making machine learning yep. uh, training. So I, I documented it as I did it and did up a guide, also kind of like a getting started with Google Cloud Platform guides if you wanted to use it. What's funny is it had my Google App Engine project from the Tweetawatt, which is now like 13 years old. It was <laughs> still there. I was like, because you know, it's, it's like been, just been like renamed and removed, but it's still like, it's, I mean, it's, it doesn't run anymore because it's something changed with the ACLs, but in theory, I think it could bring it back up. But that was my first experience using Google App Engine, which, was, which was ancient. And it had yep. like the turbo. Now it's now it's called something different. 
Um, we also have uh, from Kathy Cesari, a really cool guide on be best beginner boards for teachers. Uh, she teaches workshops and students, and so she talks about the Circuit Playground Express, the Gemma, and the Pi Badge, which have three different ways of getting started with Circuit Playground, a Circuit Python, or Make Code. Um, and the pros and cons of them and what kind of stuff you can teach your students with mm -hmm. these boards. Also covers other boards like the Makey Makey and the Micro Bit and another board I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, mm -hmm. she comes at it from a, a teacher's eye. Uh, so this guide will be great for educators if you're wondering what should I get started in my classroom. Check this out. Uh, Matthew Goodrich has been on a tear. We've sent him a bunch of really cool old operating systems we wanted him to emulate. Mm -hmm. And this month is the B-Box. Uh, which is the not next, right? Because we did next last time. So there's only 2,000 B boxes in existence. So hmm. I remember seeing one at a micro center, but never got to play with one. Yeah, but now you there's can. There's one on eBay for like $900, and I was going to buy it, but, but I think I'm just going to do this. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like it's like a pet. Like you adopt. There's only 2,000. Yeah. You if you adopt it, like you're caring for it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can run it in virtual box, and uh, it connects to the internet, and it's it's shockingly modern right it's a very modern operating system um, but the b-box the thing that was cool about it was it had like adcs and dax available on a hacker mm -hmm. port it was really cool now of course you could just plug in hardware to add that but it was built into the the board mm -hmm. um, motherboard itself very interesting kind of raspberry pi-esque in a way mm -hmm. um isaac walsh did a uh, pi portal wake up light alarm clock so he now lives in a place without uh windows or the windows are very dark <laughs> so he made an alarm clock this is sped up so 30 minutes before no, this time is how fast he actually moves 30 minutes before he wakes up the alarm clock uh the pipe portal will slowly dim the neopixels up to help him wake up in a in a calm manner right. it says it works really well um so it's a pipe portal project uh but also uses neopixels in, in circuit python and then as we showed from the show and tell amelia's disco bend camp jacket which is awesome with mem with mapped uh, NeoPixel, so you can see the effects uh, travel across the front of the jacket. Uh, I don't know what event she's going at, but this, she's definitely going to be the MC of the party. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the guide. More guides ahead. Um, we have some factory footage. Take it away, factory. Yay, factory.
All right, and it wouldn't be a set of factory videos and photos without a sunset. It rained a bunch today, so I'm sure next week there'll probably be a rainy. Some cool sunsets. Rainy one, yeah. Okie dokie, we have some 3D printing. Okay, I'm gonna get ready for noobs. Y'all yeah. watch these 3D prints. Yeah, we're gonna we'll do we'll do two of them back to back. This is yeah. the grill buttons, and then we have a sped up of a transformer. All right, take it away. Oops. Hey folks, this week we're making accessibility buttons for the Adafruit Pi Gamer. These buttons are 3D printed with the Braille alphabet, so folks can touch and feel the buttons. We made a full set of these button caps to press fit over the Pi Gamer switches. They're printed flat side down with the stem facing up. All buttons fit on the bed of the 3D printer and only took a half hour. The Braille alphabet will be printed on little cover pieces and super glued on top. The alphabet consists of dots in a 2x3 configuration. These dots are quite small, but we were able to fit them on buttons with a diameter of 9mm. Our CAD files are linked in the description so folks can download them and customize the buttons. Each cover piece has its own set of dots so you can pick and place any letter you like. To remove the parts from the bed, I like to use a razor blade. Just need to carefully get the edge of the blade underneath the part without scratching the bed. While picking out the covers, it might be a little tricky to make out the alphabet so I suggest referencing a cheat sheet so you'll need to be cautious of the orientation when placing the covers. Just a small drop of super glue is all it needs to bond to the cap. Once you get them on, you can test out the button presses and get a feel for the dots. Thanks so much for watching! Don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printing projects from Adafruit. Don't forget 3D Hangouts every Wednesday. Um, we're about to new, do new products, but um, some good news if you are in mm -hmm. other countries. Um, we now ship Adabox to Canada, the UK, France, Germany, and now three more places Netherlands, Norway, and Switzerland. Yay! Yay. You wanted it, you got it. And uh, if you do want an Adabox, the next one uh, will be pretty amazing and uh, we will run out as we always do. Yeah. So, so subscribe soon. Right now, so with subscription services um, or really anything like cell phones or cable plans, there's something called churn. So people subscribing, people going away. So we have pretty low churn right now. In fact, it's a it's statistically weird. So I'm, I try to do models around like, oh, like how many subscribers should we get or whatever. We tend to keep our subscribers for a long period of time. So we have less than 200 slots available right now. That's from of many thousands. That's that's not a lot. And right. so once we start telling people or hinting what's going to be in the next Ada box, it'll it'll go pretty fast. So if you haven't, it's probably a good idea. All right. Um, before we do new products, we should do the code circuit by Sunday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you know you could still do the ruler deal when you're doing this. Yes. Yeah. Ten percent off mine. and free ruler. Okay. You ready, Lady yes. Ada? Hit it. New, 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 Yeah. All right. Um, first up. Okay. We've got two new products, and, it, and they're also new in the series. So we've got the VCL 4040, which is a really nice proximity and lock sensor. And uh, we also have 
a DS3502. You um, yeah, I'll just talk about both kind of at the same time. It's a I2C um, potentiometer. And what's neat is that these are a new um, shape and format that we're doing, which is Stemma QT, which is compatible with Quick, which is uh, SparkFun's plug and play um, I2C sort of sensor device system. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing Stemma for quite a bit. In fact, we've had Stemma connectors on our boards for a while. I actually want to show some old boards from like 2017 to see what I, I originally came up with, which was, you know, use this JST connector and had alligator clips. And actually we even made a board with this style because I thought actually we would be doing more wearables and alligator clip stuff. Turned out not really. Um, it, it was more useful to have a small connector. So um, after seeing SparkFun has been making quick stuff for a couple of years, I was like, that's a really good idea. So when we were doing um, this next batch of I2C devices, um, we added these connectors, the JST SH four pin connectors, which uh, are quick compatible. And um, they're actually also STEMA compatible. They're actually compatible with the larger cables, the same pin order. Um, you just need the larger to smaller cable adapter, which we'll have um, in the store shortly. But what's nice about this is that it's um, chainable. And with I2C, as long as cables aren't too long, you can chain you know, a couple of them together. And I have um, level shifting on uh, the ones that need three volts. So you can use these with a five volt device or three volt device, whichever you like. Mm -hmm. And here's an example of, for example, the VCNL. Oh, it's kind of cool. You can see the yeah, infrared cool. uh, pulsing out here. And then this is uh, an OLED version of our 0.91 inch display. You can see it's a prototype because it says, so, says name. But then as I um, cover it, you know, I've got an example sketch here that just uh, prints out the proximity and light. It makes like demos and plug and play really easy. And I like the, the you know, cross connection. And then, you know, you can add also the potentiometer or other I2C devices as they come along. Um, we've already got the cables in stock, so that's pretty nice. You can just pick one of these up. If you don't want to do any soldering, you pick up this to the plug headers and you can see, you just plug it into your Feather or Arduino or Raspberry Pi and use our CircuitPython libraries that we have for these. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good way for beginners who don't want to do any soldering they can just plug this in and they can get going immediately. So this is the theme of the night, just reducing mm -hmm. the barriers, whether Very it be easy. code it's or the theme whether, of everything we do. Yeah, it's pretty much yeah, no, our this jam. Is, we already have all the code for these libraries. And I was like, you know what, this is a really good way because, you know, I have feathers and feather wings and plugins, but for people who are using like a Raspberry Pi, they may not have a breadboard at all. So yeah. this, you could plug in any sensors or devices without needing it. Mm -hmm. And the chainability means you can connect as many as you like, uh, as long as they have unique addresses. Um, next up, we have a uh, very tiny potentiometer. This is so cute. We've had the 45 millimeter long one. This one is only 35 millimeters long. It is <laughs> adorable, and it comes with a little knob on top. Uh, and if you just want a slide pot, but something small enough that you could maybe put on a feather wing or on a little breadboard. Uh, is this it or do you want the cutest one? I think that. You think this is fine? That kind of shows it pretty well, actually. This is like. We were watching the aquarium show, and there's like baby stingrays and like baby otters. <laughs> it's like, oh, look. Yeah, so this is very it's cute. It's a little slide pot. I can show it, okay. but yeah, so we got the digital potentiometer and a slide potentiometer. Okay. So lots Wanna of Want to keep going? Yeah, keep going. All right, next up, we've got um, skinny NeoPixel neon strip. So we actually had this in a chonky configuration and now we have it in this very slim that's the technical term right? this is right. well it's slim because it's it's interesting so they actually had issues making it wider and so they ended up kind of making this slim style i actually sort of like it it's very skinny it's side light neopixels and then it has like a diffused strip so i'll show it on the overhead um so it's it is neopixel you know you can control it from i've got like a metro here just driving it like normal neopixel demo and help you. you can like dim it. Well, the color is, is I think that it's mesmerizing. The color is mesmerizing, but um, <laughs> what's interesting is that it's not clear here. This is right. not translucent on three sides, and then there's this thin strip, and it's very vibrant and smooth because it's got like 96 pixels per meter. Um, but just be aware, it isn't that like rounded n neon, which we do have some of. This is slimmer, but the trade off is that you don't have it like side. You can't see from the side, only head on. Right. But 
It's the Apexel strip. It's a meter long, and it's it's got this great diffusion on it. Yeah, it looks really and good. And it's nice and durable. It's like thick silicone. This would be great for like outdoor bicycle projects, wearable projects where, uh, I, you know, I don't guarantee this for like permanent outdoor installations or putting underwater for long periods of time, but definitely outdoor use, this would be good. Okay, moving right along. We have now, uh, by popular demand, alligator clips to socket headers. We've had these with plug headers and have socket headers. So you want to connect this. Okay. okay. Anyways. We're, we're back somewhat. Okay, so we've got these yeah. uh, alligator clip to socket headers. Handy if you've got like a Raspberry Pi, you want to connect to alligator clips. You have a circuit playground, you want to connect it to something with male headers. Good times. And then, finally, one of the stars of the show is the TC4. Yeah. <gasps> Very exciting. So, so exciting. So this uh, was announced today, and we got a shipment, and we have a bunch. Um, so this is a 600 megahertz... Uh, processor with like some insane amount of flash and RAM. I don't even remember. It's like a megabyte of each or something. Um, it's a very beefy chip. This is a BGA chip with like probably a six layer board. Um, it's got like two USB ports. It's got high, speed, high speed, everything. The most, the most. Um, it's the new IMX RT1062 chipset, which we're very excited about because we were thinking of it as it would be a good upgrade from the Sandy 51, which we've loved oh, for yeah. a while. Yep. Um, the Teensy 4, it's like 20 bucks and it's so incredibly fast. And of course, you've got all the Teensy libraries um, ready to go. So displays and I think NeoPixels they got going. Yeah, uh, they were working on the eyeball code. They're going to eyeball code. So, you know, it's a different chip. It's a little bit different than others. It's kind of like a micro, it's a, it's a Cortex M7. So it's quite powerful. Um, but this is, I think, 10 times faster than, faster than the Teensy 3.2. So when you, you know, there will still be, you know, libraries and things that may need adaptation to get them working. <laughs> but if you just want like the fastest chip you could possibly get, pick up one of these. We got some, we're going you know, looking at maybe adding TeenUSB support, so your Python support to this chip. Mm -hmm. uh, we think this could, you yeah. know, definitely be the next generation. This is, it's, this is about as fast as a microcontroller can get. After this, you're actually... It is a different kind of process for dealing with yeah, chips. Yeah, I, I was talking with Paul about this, and it's like it's a kind of a hybrid between their lower end micros and their actual like Linux capable things. About half the peripherals are from the Linux capable Cortex A's. Yeah. I mean, six hundred megahertz. Are. It's like you're basically. It's ridiculous. My first. I'm super excited. PC was a Pentium one twenty. So this is like ten times faster. <laughs> Uh, so we're excited. So check these out. Um, we're we're happy to stock them. We've loved the Teensies. Yeah, from, all those are great. From job. the from the one Teensy one, the AT ninety, uh, one sixty two, all the way now to the Teensy four. It's been uh, quite a ride. Um, we still love the Teensy three point twos and three point sixes, and these will probably be coming out in because it's chip, of course, has bazillions of pins. You'll be seeing three, you know, four point fives and four point sixes come out. I'm sure with more pins. So stay tuned. Okay, 
and the story of the show tonight besides the community and all the people who work on Circuit Python. Is the Pi ruler Scott now? And Lady Ada. It's the ruler. Yay! <laughs> Circuit Python rules. It's in a beautiful purple color. Uh, we've got those capacitive touchpads, those LEDs. This is one of the demos. Um, we had this in red, and now we have it in purple. Uh, and it's also, of course, part of the giveaway uh, that we're doing when you order from the Adafruit shop during the month of August. All supplies last. Okay, mm -hmm. and with that, we made it. Okay, do you want to do a quick recap? Let's do a quick recap. New, 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 super fast. We've got the VCL 4040 proximity and lux sensor, now in STEMA QT format. Uh, with quick compatible connectors. Also a digital I2C potentiometer that can go up to 12 volts and has non-volatile memory. Also with quick connects. A adorable 35 millimeter potentiometer. Look at how cute this slide pot is. It's so cute. It comes with a knob even. So cute, so useful. You got NeoPixel strips, but this time it's one meter thin diffused neon. So it's got the silicone diffusion side LEDs for a beautiful uh, diffused look, but it's NeoPixel compatible. We've got alligator clips to uh, socket headers, so standard 0.1 inch socket headers uh, connect to alligator clips back and forth of these crop clips. Look at those connectors. You're happy. The TNC4, so exciting, it's finally out. Mm -hmm. uh, same size and shape as the TNC3.2, but 600 megahertz IMX RT 1062 uh, microcomputer crossover processor. Incredibly fast with support from TNC Duino. Uh, this is the chip to watch with tons yes. of flash and RAM at an amazing price. Um, this is as fast as it gets, buddy. Let's check it out. And the CircuitPython ruler uh, rules. It's <laughs> like a TNC M0, but it's got capacitive touchpads and LEDs. And it's a ruler with references and, and measurements. And of course, we're in CircuitPython. We're doing giveaways and warp with this ruler during the month of August for Circuit Python. That was new. All right, thanks for your patience, everybody. Yeah, it looks like mm -hmm. YouTube went down and that caused problems, just, but then uh, everything else resumed after we I'm restarted. I'm psyched that like, Wirecast is just like, YouTube's down, I'm out of here. I'm yeah, done. Bye. it's dramatic. Okay, well, don't forget the code, Circuit Python Day, and don't forget we have these rulers. Let's do some top secret. Uh, a couple I always things. love top secret. Yeah, it's everyone's favorite Everyone's segment. Favorite. I see things on here I haven't seen yet. That's right. Even though I'm in the know. Yeah. Um, so Wait, these are check some... Check the GitHub repos. Well, these are some photos. We filmed an, another episode of our IoT series. Uh, this one's security. You can tell because there's all these locks Look here. at these locks. And look mm -hmm. at this. This is the this yeah. cool glass. And these are a couple future products as well. So what those, are they? The secure element chips that um, let you do... Yeah, they got locks on them. That's how you know they're secure. and keys. <laughs> and then uh, this is from Phil B. Coming soon. Beautiful eyes on the 240 by 240 displays using the Sammy 51. Yeah, those displays are awesome. And uh, do you have something that you wanted to show? Yeah, I can show this off. I'll disconnect this. So we have a, this is kind of exciting because it kind of messed with this power supply. So I'm like, I'm going to grab a power supply from another board. We have the Pi Portal Titano. So this is a 320 by 240, 3.2 inch display. Uh, with all the Pi Portal goodness that you know and love. It's got the Wi-Fi, that big display, um, SD card, stemma connectors, and all that stuff. It's, but, but it's bigger than a regular. But now it's bigger because yeah. it is a uh, full 3.5 inch, 320 by 240, so twice as many pixels. And now with the speed ups in CircuitPython, you'll definitely be able to display even more data on this display. Okay. What's that? Is top secret. Well, I'm excited about this one too, the OLED. Yeah, I hadn't seen that. Soon. Yeah, this is coming. I, I'm a fan of OLED, so I'm, I'm excited to see that. Too. Yeah, this is what I was using to test. Remember, I was like, oh, I'm trying to test it. This is what I was testing. Yeah, like. back yeah. in the vault. OLEDs. Okay, well, we're gonna do a quick round of questions. We gotta get out of here soon. Um, mm -hmm. Go to Discord, adafruit.it/discord. Join all 13,000 of us. Um, I have a couple of questions loaded up already, and then Hit we'll me. do a giveaway. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, there's a really good question, and we're probably going to talk about this tonight after the show. So uh, I think it was Tammy asked. Um, I wish there was a really good tool for quickly and easily updating CircuitPython and the libraries on all the various devices I have. <laughs> I feel like I might have to write something. Okay. 
Well, We're, Tammy, please feel free. To I know. We'd yeah. love it if you'd make yeah. it. Could you? Ask him for a friend. Um, I think there's an issue that just we just started that yeah. was like this is the the like little bits like all of our drivers have the version number and the repo yes, that came from yes we did from. that we yeah. made the decision early because we're like we'll need to eventually do this so yeah. let's get the, all the libraries to have the the data that allows us to tell you get the requirements of text so it knows what the yep. uh, dependencies are you know what version it is and you know the name of and the repo where you can get more info mm -hmm. okay um, for the folks asking uh, actually for Stemma and Stemma QT are they Grove compatible? Yes, and I wrote a guide that we made live last week. So here's here's the deal. Um, Quick is super awesome, but it's three volt only, and it doesn't have level shifting in it. Whereas Grove um, assumes that you have level shifting on each board, and so I like level shifting. So I added level shifting to all of the boards that I make because I I personally am very paranoid. Mm -hmm. um, that means that you can use all of the boards that I make with Quick, they'll work fine, and you can use them with Grove, they'll work fine. Um, but that's not necessarily the opposite true. Like Quick will not necessarily work with Grove unless you make sure that it's not putting five volts into the power line. Because there's Grove sometimes, especially with Arduino, it sends five volt data and mm -hmm. signal down. Okay, uh, next up, um, someone's asking for an international shipping discount when it's over $200. Yeah, that one's tough because shipping gets really expensive for international. I'd suggest going through DigiKey. Yeah, we have resellers. Or our international Mouser. resellers. Yeah, yeah, we have tons of distributors that have. Will get. It'll get you faster. No matter what discount we did, cheaper. going. But so we have two thousand distributors. Yeah. Um, it'll always be cheaper. That's what they're there for. They they will be able to order stuff for you and stock yeah. it, and you can right. get it locally. And that's okay. always if a product is out of stock. That's a good trick as well. Because yeah. they may have it if they probably bought them. Com doesn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is for both of you. Um, a favorite multimeter? Do you have one that you like? The one I have. I really I, like yeah. the little pocket one that I have. The 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 PM probe. It's a little red one. We used to stock it, but we actually didn't sell it. It's from Fluke. It's okay. like the M probe mini red one. It's just so small and thin, and like it's like I just feel like multimeters are too big for general purpose usage. Yeah. Just, okay. get chunky I use chunky. my Salier more than I yeah. use my multimeter. I, my multimeter is my scope. Oh, uh, JMK may have found a thing, a link that we should look at for Adafruit Daily. So email support at adafruit.com, JMK, and uh, put attention, Phil, and I'll check it out. Looks like there might be a link that goes to your Adafruit account preferences, which doesn't do anything, so that one might just be a link. Okay. Um, you can't, you cannot edit or modify any Adafruit Daily stuff from your Adafruit account. Um, next up, uh, someone wants to see a microcontroller in New York City with a risk core. Yeah, we, we do too. Very cool. uh, what is the best method to convert USB HID device to work with a MIDI device with expansion port? Mm, you can easily. You'd have to have some device in between to read the data and convert it. So the answer is not okay. easily. <laughs> let's, uh, I'll ask more questions if one's come in while we're doing this, but let's give away something. Let's give away one? something. Let's give away... Uh, a Teensy 4 and a ruler. Cool. Teensy 4 and a ruler. Yeah, why not? Okay. Well, that's the phone number. What's the rules? Rules are if you won something before, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. The first person to call the phone number that's on the screen right now and decode those letters. Uh, I'll pick up the phone when you call. I'm going to ask you your name and where you're calling from and a project you're working on or you want to work on. And if you can answer those questions, you will win two fabulous prizes, a CircuitPython ruler and a Teensy 4. So we'll get one of these. One of those. One of these. And one of these. And I just need to call this number. The TT4 is also a ruler. It's just only like an inch long. <laughs> it's only for measuring very s yeah. small things. All right. Two prizes. So call this number now. And you got a better shot than usual because the YouTube not working still. So you oh, no, it's back. It's, it's back? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. back for a while. I don't know what's going to happen if it's going to make two shows or just going to run into one show. Oh, no. Find out. Call the phone. Make it ring. Uh, I won something before, but my alter ego hasn't done that count. Well, I'm not going to get into that, so sure. The right. alter ego. Well, if it's you physically, <laughs> then no. Okay. It has to be a different right. physical so instantiation. Ahoy, ahoy. No way. Hello. Hi. Congratulations. You managed to call. Ask Engineer, and uh, you were able to call the number. What's your name, and where are you calling from? 
My name is Gary, and I'm calling from Toronto. Okay, Gary from Toronto, congratulations. You're the winner of two fabulous prizes because it's a special day. You get a Pi Ruler and a Teensy 4. Wow. We will ship that to you. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S U P P O R T, at adafruit.com, and say, hey, uh, I'm from Toronto. Uh, send me this package and we'll, we'll send it to you right away. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Sure. I'm working on a project where uh, using uh, an LED, or not an LED, but a photo cell, some sort of uh, cell to yeah. read the, uh, the error codes on, on a lot of devices like your furnace or whatever. Oh, yeah. That's so a good read, idea. Right? Yeah. Right? yeah read, and uh, gives you a display instead of... Uh, yeah, this flashing light. That's a good idea. Yeah, the flashing lights. Is, yeah, I've seen projects where it's like you, they read from the thermostat. Well, that's very exciting. Uh, maybe you can use this TT4 or Pi Ruler in your project. Don't forget to email support at adafruit.com to get your free prize sent to you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Good night. You too. Okay. Success. Mm -hmm. All right, that's our show for tonight. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, special thanks, Scott. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having uh, us. Thanks Yay. for working on uh, Circuit Python, and most of all, thanks for all the thought and care you put into something. We can all spend our time on things, yeah. But every week, um, we were just talking about newsletters and stuff, and I, I really thoroughly enjoy collecting all the things that people are doing with this cool thing that's getting so many people that um, maybe didn't even think they were going to be a programmer mm -hmm. or an artist or an engineer or whatever. And right. Circuit Python has been there in red. We had a couple. That's, um, it's, that's all it's about. Yeah, we had, <laughs> we had a couple posts that someone said I've never done anything with GitHub, but Circuit Python is the thing that got me because there were so many resources. Mm -hmm. So thanks, because I know it's it's something that y you have to have that lens and that mindset on everything you do to make this work out so well. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks everybody's watching. Yeah. Special totally. thanks to all of our Adafruit team members that are uh, helping out behind the scenes. Takara is helping out. Thanks, Takara. Um, everyone in the Adafruit Discord, mm -hmm. um, all of our Adafruit team members here, all of our remote team members, the entire CircuitPython community for CircuitPython mm -hmm. Day. All the contributors, Yay. we've had hundreds Yay. of contributors total. Yay. It's growing. Yay. We're getting Thanks, like 40 Lincoln. pull requests a week now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Across and, all our libraries in the core. And this is just getting started. It's only oh, a yeah. couple years old. <laughs> and so I can't wait to see what happens next year. Started with me. Eight. Yeah. Next year, 8-8, eight, eight, we'll be doing this again. I know. So thank you we'll so much, We'll definitely have more libraries, more boards. We'll see. Maybe we'll have the IMX 1062 by then. Or maybe we'll have a list I, five. I hope. I hope we have yeah. the RT going. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, we'll watch this maybe in a year and look back. Keep an eye out. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Here is your moment of Zener. Bye, everybody.